and knowing that, that they were going to hit it head on and there was absolutely nothing they could do about it. And the traffic all going along here, I suppose, doing about 50 miles an hour, because I think it's in an average speed camera zone, so probably if people were going faster, there would have been, it would have been worse, so you had time to, you know, to slow down. We'd spoken to a few witnesses, and once the initial um, shock of everything had calmed down for people, it became obvious that there was a fault, um, probably either with the driver of the lorry or maybe with the lorry itself. Although no one's died, the fact that it could so easily have been a catastrophe means the southbound carriageway is going to remain closed for quite some time while investigators find out exactly what went wrong. After having come across the uh, central reservation, he, he hit this, uh, the Passat head on um, and ended up in lane one and stopped and then after a few seconds moved over to the, the hard shoulder. And apparently, after a few seconds, he got out and then collapsed. There was a suggestion that he was uh, taken ill at the wheel. If there is a potential for a, a fatal or a life changing, um, we will pull out all the stops to investigate. Eventually, when we've made one, we're going to spin all this round, take it off the, off the ensuite. Superb. It's a huge decision when you think about it to, to close off a main arterial route like the M1 motorway to do your investigation. Um, and it's a big decision to take. Despite the cost, the motorway will remain closed until the investigation's complete. When they're not chasing car thieves or picking up the pieces after bad crashes, the traffic cop's stock in trade is enforcing motoring laws. Even coming to the end of a long shift, PC Shona Gillen is more eager than most to catch illegal motorists. So it can be hectic sometimes. She's a, she buzzes like a bee and she's always after everything. But she, you know, she gets results, so it's good. I just think that's come from years of experience. It's 11 years of me stopping vehicles and stopping people. You generally get this feel and you, you go with your gut instinct. Coming up to some traffic lights on the outskirts of Luton, Shona's got that feeling about a car going past the other way. Yes. This car here has just gone past. I should come out and patrol around here more often, you know. As the driver came round the corner, he had this kind of reddish complexion on his face and just didn't look quite right. And initially, I thought he was a drink driver. Under the Road Traffic Act, Shona can stop and request any driver to produce their documents. Something just clicked inside me. I thought, that car needs stopping. It's got the left. And there's no time to waste. The car's pulling over, but suspiciously, two passengers have got out rather promptly. They didn't run away, but they, it was like they didn't want to be associated with having been in the car. I would have certainly bet an awful lot, an awful lot, that there was something in that car. Is this your vehicle? Yes, it's my car. The driver seems quite amenable. I've, um, I've just been uh, the hotel. If a little yeah. vague. No, no. Okay. You've got a brake light out. Oh, they are. Where do these where do these people live? Um they live I, I, they live hotel right. They're different than them. Well not they're people. So they don't live here? Yeah, well they they asked me to drop them they said they knew yeah. someone here. He said he lived there, he doesn't. I oh, know he don't. Come back here. Come back here, both of you. I was able to go down the road and just catch up with uh, well, one of the other two, the, the lady. Continued round the corner, conveniently. That's her mum's house. That's her mum's house. So yeah, where are you going, going now? Nowhere. Just going round to the back garden. Why? So we can get in. Why can't you get in the front? Because she's not in. She she's went up in the back garden in the, in the shed. Come round with you. Have you got any identification with you? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Just round the back, apparently. The man's story is a good one, but typically, Shona hasn't bought it. Well, not the traffic car. 
And as I've run around the corner, she was quite a way away up that road. So there was no way that she was going into the back garden of that house, which is what Matey Boy had, had initially said. What were you going in that house for then? Because that's where my mum lives. What were you going in that house for? I went to the wrong house. Well, that's not my mother, is it? I just got the house mixed up. I said, is that your house? You said yes. No, I meant that one. Yeah. 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 Where have you come from? Uh, Cullen, Cullen Road. Pardon? Cullen Road. They were so vague. No, it, you can tell when someone has to suddenly think before they can tell you what they're doing. Then you, you know, you know they're making it up. Shona's managed to get the woman. What's your postcode? Uh, oh, now that is, I'm not too sure. What's our postcode, Doug? That's it. I'm not. I'm never too sure of the postcode. And what's your name? If they hadn't been in such a hurry to disappear, they might not have aroused any suspicion. But now, after all their flim-flam, Shona's going to follow her hunch and search their car. I believe that there was something in that vehicle that they didn't want us to find. So I searched the vehicle under uh, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. Shona's instinct is spot on. They've been on a shopping spree. It's got the security tag still around it. It's worth quite a bit of money, really, which is obviously why they've just decided to get out and walk away. There's also some pliers handy for removing the security tags. All in all, a tidy haul of toiletries worth over £200. They've obviously just committed a, a theft from shop, which is why they wanted to get away in the first place and why both the passengers had got out the vehicle to disassociate themselves with anything that was in that car. I want to blow my nose. Can I go and get a tissue out of my car? <laughs> okay. Okay. What's okay. your name, Flower? My name's Charles. Charles. Yeah. Charles, have you ever been in trouble with the police before? Uh, have you been arrested? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Are you well known to us? No. Okay. He reminded me of, of somebody's granddad. Really, he was very. He seemed quite nervous. He was being very woolly about his answers. He didn't really know why he dropped them off or who lived at that address, and. He was kind of playing a bit dumb. They said they'd want me to drop them here. And all it was doing was just arousing my suspicions even further. Yeah. We found some items in a carrier bag in the car. Yeah. Are they yours? No, no, they had bags with them. No, but what no. kind of bags did they have with them? Uh, I don't know, I think a green bag, I think. I didn't really take that note. Right, OK. I think. Oh, dear. But it's in your car. I take it you're saying something in there that shouldn't be there. Well, quite possibly. OK. Yeah, well, but I'm I don't asking know for your account before we yeah, no, it's, about it's, it. Yeah, it's, no, they're not my bags. They're not my bags. Well, what have they got in the back? Don't Scott. wander off, please. No, we won't. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. And then in the front we have another Wakefield bag and a pair of pliers. This is why they've wandered off, because if they live there and then they don't. Yeah, yeah, if they see wanted anyway. I'm just trying to run out through. A check of the man in glasses has revealed he likes to do a bit of shopping, but he's not one for loyalty cards. I think he was wanted for a number of offences in Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire and a warrant as well. So he was going nowhere. 